I wanted to show how I plan my Fair Isle projects, my multicolored knitting projects, how I try out different color combinations without swatching, before swatching rather. So in essence what I do is I create pictures like this one where I have the, the yarns I'm planning to use and I combine them in different ways according to the pattern. So here's one combination, here's a different combination in a different order. And here third, here's a third combination. So it gives me options uh, and a, an opportunity to play around with different, with different options quite easily. Um, and the tools that I use for this is, well, the main tool I use is Procreate, which is one of the big drawing tools for the iPad and for other platforms as well. But I'm using an iPad. So I, I thought I'd walk you through this process step by step. And for this example, I'll be looking at the Shetland, Shetland Wool Week hat, this year's hat, 2022. Uh, this lovely, lovely Bonnie Isle hat that I'm, I'm planning to, to knit now. And that's why I've, I've been working with this. There are a lot of different, more already pre-planned colorways. So you can, you can easily just order them if you like. Um, but you might have yarn at home like I do, and you might want to use that. So I'll, I'll walk you through the steps that I, I take uh, to get to the point where I can start playing around with colors. The, the first thing you need is, of course, you need the charts. So you need to get the charts off of the pattern. By the way, I'll, I'll link to this pattern in, in the comments below the video. It's a free pattern, but they, they do appreciate a, a donation. So if you feel that you, you're able to donate to Shetland Wool Week, then by all means do. There's five different charts in, in this. I will not uh, use them all for this little example. I'll just grab a couple and, and then we can get started. So I'll take chart A and B. Uh, so what I do first is I, I screenshot the charts and this depends a little bit on your device. My device, uh, to, to take a screenshot, I press the power key on the side here and and the volume up key and that's how I get a screenshot there we go if you have a different iPad or a different device it might be done differently I know for the ones that have a round button up on the bottom you press the power key and the button as, at the same time to, to do the same thing and then I like to actually already here uh, in this view I like to crop crop the charts and and for this purpose, I actually usually just use the, the chart itself, so I don't keep any of the annotations or the um, name of the chart or anything like that. And when I start knitting, I, I'll use the actual pattern, so I don't, I don't need the name of the chart for this. So then when I'm done, I save this to photos, and then I take the next one in the same way. I take a screenshot by pressing again the power button and the volume up button. And then I, again, uh, just drag these with my finger, these edges, so that I get get the size that I like. And then I click down, done, done up here on the, on the left. And I say save to photos. And then I also need, besides the charts, I also do need this, this key. Uh, that makes it a lot easier to... To handle the chart so I'm going to screenshot the key as well so volume up and power at the same time and there we go and then I'll just crop that as well like so and save to photos there we go okay so let's let's now pretend that's all the charts we want to work with um, so I'll just switch over to procreate and uh, this is not going to be a complete Procreate tutorial, obviously. It's a very powerful, very uh, comprehensive uh, digital image processing tool and drawing tool. And it's fun in itself to play with, but we're not going to do that now. I'm just going to show the things that you need to know to work with patterns in this way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project here. So I cl click this plus button up here. And uh, it doesn't really matter what canvas size we use. I, I usually just go for, for the screen size. I'm, I'm going to resize it for my needs anyway, once I know how much 
screen estate I need. So I just go screen size here. And that brings up this canvas that we will be working with. We can now start adding the screenshots that we that we took. And you do that by going up to this little wrench up here. And from there you select add. And then we go here and select insert a photo, this one. And here are my screenshots, the ones I took already. So I'll just import them one by one. Here's the key. And I'll just move that over to the side. So I just put my finger anywhere on the screen and, and pull it over to the side. I think I'll put it like here. And then we'll go up back here to, to the little wrench again. And again, insert a photo and take the next one. Okay, this is the second one. I'll put that up here somewhere there will be fine. And then another one. I had three of these now. You would continue adding these for as many as you have. I'm just doing these two now for, for the sake of this example. And I like to place them fairly close to each other like this. Uh, zoom. You zoom by, by pinching out move, with two fingers moving apart. And there we go. I like to align these. It, it looks nicer. Align these columns. All right. So let's look at what we have. If we pinch out, this is what it looks like now. So it, what you might notice at this point is that if we'd added all the five charts here, they wouldn't have fit on to this canvas. So I'll show you how to resize the canvas if you need to. Um, and you do that also from this little tool icon, the wrench there, and you select instead of add, which we had before, you select canvas instead. Crop and resize is the option that we want to choose. So we choose that one. And then we get this kind of a view where you can see these little handles that you can use to, to resize the canvas. And what you can do is you can uh, make it larger or smaller. So you can also if you need to have a lot of these, you can, by zooming out a bit and, and raising it higher, you can get it as big as you want. I'm not going to do that now. I'm, I'm just going to crop it so that it, it fits, fits my needs perfectly. There we go. I'll just click done up here. And there we go. There's one more thing I want to add here. I'd like to add another picture uh, of my my yarns. So I, I've taken a picture of my yarns here and I'll just add that. It's a bit big. So I'll just move it off to the side, resize it a little bit and move it off to the side like this. Okay. So then we're done. At this point, before I do anything else, I'm going to create a color, a set of color swatches for my yarns. One way of doing that is to let's uh, procreate, extract the colors that it sees in this image. So what I do here is I click this color swatch up here, which shows the, the active color. Click that and that will bring up uh, all the different color choosing tools. You, you can select which one you want to use from down here. So there's like a disc like this, there's the classic, there's something called harmony and, and value. But I want to bring out, up the palettes now. And I want to add one, add a new palette. And I want to say new from photos. And then I want to select the same photo that I have of my, of my yarns. Select that one. And then you can see here it created this, this set of colors. It's exactly the same as the one below because I did this already. And these, I can choose now from these, I can try to find the ones that best match my colors here. So uh, if we start with this one, the gray, I think probably it's this color here. So I select that color and then from here I select a, a brush and I like to use a, a fairly opaque one. So I, I have from here, I, I usually select this inking and uh, scroll down to the studio pen. That's my favorite for this kind of thing. And then uh, with this brush, I'm going, going to use my 
pen for this, but I just kind of draw a bit of a blob there of that color on top of that. Then I go for the second one. Uh, so again, I go up here, click on the color swatch up there. And then I select something that matches that one. There's nothing really perfect here now. Either this one or this one. Maybe this one is closer. I'll try with that one. Let's see. And the good thing is, of course, when you do this, you get it pretty close to there. So you can see if it's the right one. Actually, I don't like that. That's too gray. I need something a bit bluer. So I'll undo this. And undo, when you undo, what you do is you tap the screen once with, with two fingers like this. That's undo. Redo is tapping with three fingers. So if you undo too, too far, then you can redo with, with a three finger tap. I want to undo that and I want to set, select a different color that's closer to that one. Hmm, there's nothing really great here. So then what you can do, I think I'll choose this one. It's the closest one. And then I'll try and, and bring it more into the blue. So what I'll do is I'll go down here to disks. From here, I'll try to manipulate it. Maybe I'll bring it more into the blue area like this. What do we think? This is quite good, isn't it? Let's try if this is better. Yeah, that's good. And then I do the same for the other ones. All right, so then I have swatches that I can use later when I want to select my colors and, and see what it looks like. All right, so now we have this basically set up. One thing I want to do still, and you don't have to do this, but it makes it easier in the end, is that I, I want to have all, all of this that we see now in one layer. So if we click on this layers uh, button up here, and we can see what we have, what layers we have. And as, as you can see, each of the images I imported has created its own layer. So uh, I want to merge these into one. And what I do then is I, I start by clicking the top one, just tapping with my finger. So I get this menu up here. And then from here, I select merge down this option down here, merge down. And then I do it again with the new merged layer I'd select merge down and then here again and merge down like that so now I have all my image images in one layer that's going to make life easier later right then we are ready to start creating layers for each of these yarns that's how I, I usually do it for each yarn that we have here for each different color uh, we will create a separate layer and that way we can recolor one layer at a time to get the different combinations and try out different combinations of these. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's start with yarn A. Yarn A is this light gray. So you can see we have quite a lot of yarn A in this lower one. Most of it is yarn A actually. And then here in the lower part of, of the second chart, we have a bit of yarn A as well. So now what we want to do is we want to select everything from this color, everything that is this color in this picture we want to select. And unfortunately, there is no tool to do that automatically in Procreate. So we have to do a bit of labor here to, to get that to work. So what we do is we uh, use this selection tool up here and the, the little S up there. So I activate that and then that brings up this toolbox down here. And what we want to do is we want to have automatic. So we don't want to use any of these other ones. We want to use automatic so we get as much help as possible from, from the app. And then we want to uh, have add selected. Pay attention that color fill isn't selected. If color fill is selected, then you're going to drive yourself crazy because that will just, instead of select things, it will color fill things. That's not what we want at this point. So make sure to, to uh, if that is selected, you just tap it once and then it will be unselected. This is what it should look like. And then we start by uh, tapping 
each area that we want selected. And I usually want to zoom in a bit here uh, to see what I'm doing. So I just here kind of tap on this little area here, the little square there, and you can see it turned black in this case to show that it's been selected. And I want to do that for every little square here in this pattern, uh, including the ones here with the little dots in them, which I believe are pearl stitches. So I go through them all, each and every one of them, and I select, tap once on each of these squares. And if I accidentally tap something that I don't want to, I uh, say I tap this one here, uh, I don't know if you saw that, but I tapped this one here and it changed it changed color slightly. Uh, so I selected something I didn't want to select. Then I can undo by tapping just uh, with two fingers, tapping somewhere on the screen once, like so. That undoes it. Uh, there is a bug, however. I don't know if you saw that. So if I tap something, let's say I tap this and I didn't want to tap it, I undo, I tick, uh, I tap once with two fingers and it says undo automatic selection but it still looks selected. There's a bug in this version of Procreate. Uh, it doesn't redraw the image until you select something else. So don't worry about that. What you also can do is is say I now want to undo what I just did. I tap twice, undo twice, then it does disappear. But that also undoes my previous action. So if I now tap here, you can see this one became unselected. So I, I undid that one as well with the second tap. It's a bug. I'm sure they'll fix it eventually. All right, so I'll just go ahead and select all of these. Maybe I'll fast forward this so you don't have to watch me select everything. All right, now I've selected every part of the chart that is marked as yarn A. And uh, now I want to save this as a separate layer. And how I do that is I click here on copy and paste down here. And what happens then, select was disengaged. And if we click up here on the layers, you can see that there's a new layer called from selection there. And if I unselect uh, layer one here, these little tick marks here will show you which layers are visible. And I now make layer one invisible. And then we can see that this looks good. Now we can only see this from selection layer here. And that looks good. It looks like what we wanted. All right, I'll, I'll make layer one visible again. And if you want to now, and this is something I maybe recommend that you do, is that you rename this layer. So you remember that this is yarn A. That's going to make life easier later. So you tap on it and then from this to bring this menu up and, and then from this menu, you choose rename and then you, you name it to yarn A, for instance, if that's what it's called in the pattern and press enter. There we go. So you do that for each of the different colors. Um, so there will be a yarn B, a yarn C and a yarn D layer like this. So let's do the same thing for yarn B. At this point, since we've been working with, with the layer that has yarn A on it, that's going to be the active layer. But you need to be working on the, the pattern itself, otherwise it won't work. If, if this happens to you, let me show you what, what happens if, if you do it wrong. If this happens to you, you, you have your yarn A active and we want to start working with yarn B. You st uh, start the selection tool, automatic and add is, is selected and color fill is not selected. Everything looks fine. And we go here to yarn B and we tap that and then everything turns blue. So the reason this happens is because we're looking at the wrong, wrong layer. So I'll undo that and I'll select layer one instead here. And then again, selection tool, automatic and add is selected. Color fill is not selected. And we go then and here to this yarn B square and select that. All right, it, as you can see here, it didn't quite select the whole square for me. And I have now a very low selection threshold. What you do is you tap 
and you slide. And you can see when you slide to the right here, you get a higher selection threshold. And if I slide to the left, it gets smaller. So I might want it a bit higher. This, this kind of, oh, that's too big. Now it selects too much. So somewhere here seems like it's good. So that's yarn B. And then let's select everything that is yarn B in here. That's the second lightest gray. So I think there's not very much of yarn B in here. I think it's just these down here. This is of course because I didn't didn't import all the charts. Yarn B is more more visible maybe in other charts. All right, that's yarn B, all of it selected. So I go down here and say copy and paste. There we go. And then I have this from new from selection here. That is yarn B. And I want to again rename it and call it yarn B. There we go. And then I continue with the next color. And again, make sure you select layer one. Actually, I'm going to rename that one to pattern. That makes it easier. And select that one. And then again, select tool, automatic add and not color fill. And then we go and do the same for yarn C and yarn C is mainly here in the center there. And oh yeah, and this one all around the, the waves up there. Okay. So I might speed this up. So tap yarn C there and then start tapping each of them. You might need to play around a little bit with your, your thresholds here to get this to work the way you want it to. There we go. That's all of it. And then I click copy and paste. And I have the new layer. I rename it to yarn C. Okay. And then activate the pattern layer again. Okay. Then it's time for yarn D. And then finally yarn E. So we, we activate the pattern layer, select. Okay, so now we have one layer for each yarn. So now let's start with the obvious order. So maybe A, B, C, D, E. So the way you do this is you select the color that you want. So in this case, we're going to start with yarn A, which is going to be this light gray. So what I do is I place my finger on top of it. And then this color selection tool comes up. You can see it. And that's fine. I'll just let it go. And then you can notice that this color up here changed to the same color as that one. So now I, I know I have that color chosen. And then I go from here to uh, and manipulate the layers again. And now initially what we have to do is we have to alpha lock this layer, which means that whatever we do, uh, we will be doing with just this particular color in this layer. And then I say from here, I go and select fill layer. There we go, fill layer. And that you may have noticed now it's colored in my yarn E square here and my yarn E square is over there. So that worked. All right. Uh, oh, but I didn't want. Oh, sorry. That wasn't supposed to be yarn E. That was supposed to be yarn A. Let's do that over. So I undid that and I went to yarn. I'll go to yarn A instead. And from here again, remember to set the alpha lock. You have to do that once for each layer. And then we say fill layer. All right, now you can see that yarn A, the, the yarn A squares have been filled in with this color. It's almost the same as the, the 
the patterns color for this so it's not that obvious let's do yarn B as well so let's go through the step again I, I go here to the sw color swatch that I created I tap and hold there we go and then I select the yarn B layer I make sure that alpha lock is active like that and then I click fill layer and here we go this is more obvious you can see that the medium blue colors is activated there So this is our first color combination finished and what I like to do at this point is that I like to save this as an image so that I can remember what this looked like and compare it to, to other choices later. So what I'll do is I'll go here to this again up here on the left the, the wrench and then I will select share and then here on the share, the share image not not the, the separate layers, but the entire image. I want to share a JPEG and then it exports it. And I can then say save image from here. There we go. And then it saves it into my photos. All right, so that's the first one. Let's now switch this around a little bit. Say I, I don't really like this. I want to do something different. Maybe we could try it in the opposite order that this would be A, B, C, D, E. Let's try that. So I would, uh, again, I have this color already selected. That was the last one I worked with. Uh, but that's going to be color yeah, or yarn A now. So I select yarn A and I bring up the menu and then say just fill layer. And now yarn A, as you can see down here, is this lighter color. And then again, I bring up... Uh, the color selection tool by resting my finger on that swatch I get the maroon color up here and that's going to be my new yarn B so I click on, on yarn B click once more or tap once more to get the menu up and then alpha lock is already selected so all I have to do is fill layer there we go you can see that changed and then we go ahead with this dark navy that's going to be my new yarn C. Well, actually, it is already yarn C. I don't have to do that. Okay, so we skip that. We go for this medium blue instead. And I swatch that. And that's going to be my new yarn D. So I tap on yarn D and fill layer. And then finally, yarn E is going to be this light gray. So I swatch it and I fill it and there we go that's the new one with the colors in opposite order do we like this hmm or maybe I mean you don't have to like every option you don't have to save every option as, <laughs> as an image I usually just save the ones that I think I might like in the end so but let's share this one as well so activate share and then from here the select JPEG and then it exports it and then you scroll down to save image and that's it so this way you can try different combinations quite easily without having to knit a million swatches to see what it looks like yeah one thing that I, I ran into was that I accidentally be, because I had been working with the different thresholds uh, for the selection and I had been undoing things then when I had created the layer I had selected all the squares in the pattern and saved it and everything and then I realized that I was missing a square in the key. So how do you add to your layer? It's fairly straightforward. So what you do, let's say I was missing something from yarn B, the, the maroon one, that's easy to see. So what I do is I select the color that I happen to have selected for that yarn at that point. So in this case, I select the maroon and then I select that layer. It's the yarn B layer. There we go. 
and then I want to draw in this square there. So uh, what I have to do then first is I have to remove the alpha lock. Uh, that allows me to make changes anywhere in the layer and not just in the place where, where the color is active. And then I select this uh, pen tool and then, I don't know, let's pretend that what I wanted now is this square to be yarn B colored, this one here. So what I do is, is I, I will make that a little smaller and then I will just color that in by hand. I'm using my my uh, Apple Pencil for this just because I'm better at drawing with that. But like this, it doesn't have to be perfect, just something like that. So now uh, when I'm done, I go back, I remember to turn on the alpha lock again. And then if I want to recolor this uh, yarn B, say to, I don't know, this color, then you can see when I do fill layer here, then the, that one, the, this this square also got recolored. So if, you've, if, if you missed something in the pattern or like this in, in the key, then it's always fixable. You don't have to redo everything. You don't have to go and click all those hundreds of little squares again. Do leave questions in, in the comments and, and I might make additions to this video if there's something that's that's still unclear. But that's basically how I do it. I hope this was useful for you and I hope it makes it possible for you to try out uh, different color combinations. And have fun. Thanks for listening.